Hello YouTube, and in this video we're going to be fault finding and changing out a raw water pump on a marine diesel engine. So we uh, are entering into, Pi into Portland Harbour uh, under sail. Uh, our engine has overheated. Well, that is to say the engine exhaust alarm has gone off. Now that means there's no cooling water, raw, raw water going through. It um, doesn't mean the engine itself is overheated, so uh, it, we've checked that there's nothing around the prop as best we can without going in the water. Um, it could be that it's uh, a, blocked in, uh, a blocked intake. It could be that the impeller's imploded, the one that we changed uh, about a month ago. Um, so, uh, investigations uh, are ongoing, uh, but at the moment we are without power. So we had to radio in to Portland to tell them we were coming in under sail, and we will sort out getting into the marina. We should probably get in with the engine on tick over without doing any damage. So we are not uh, in danger or in peril, but we are slightly disabled and we have a major defect. More to come. The first thing to do in a situation like this is to make sure the boat and crew are safe. In this case, that meant finding a spot to anchor safely and dropping the hook. The breakdown occurred when we tried to start the engine on our approach to Portland Harbour. And as we were close to the north entrance, we sailed easily into the harbour and into the designated anchorage area, finding a spot with no other boats and a decent depth, and then rounding the boat up head to wind. So with the boat and crew now safe, we can tackle the problem. And we start our investigation with the alarm that alerted us in the first place. I fitted a NASA EX-1 exhaust alarm to confidence, and it was that that first alerted us to the problem. The principle is very simple. On a raw water-cooled marine engine, hot exhaust gases are combined with raw seawater in the exhaust elbow and discharged together over the side. The EX-1 is a simple temperature alarm with a sensor fitted to the exhaust pipe. Without cooling water, the temperature in the exhaust will rise almost immediately, triggering the EX-1. The advantage of this rapid reaction is that the alarm goes off well before any of the engine components get a chance to actually overheat. And as happened here, we were able to react to the problem before there was any risk to the engine itself. Suffice to say, I've fitted exhaust alarms on all boats that I own, and it's been a very good investment. With the alarm sounding, a quick check over the side, and we can see that there's no cooling water coming out of the exhaust. So the problem is definitely with the raw water cooling system. In a raw water-cooled engine, water is let into the system through a hole in the bottom of the boat, or in the case of this boat, through vents in the sail drive leg. The raw water pipes are protected by a seacock, and the first length of pipe rises up above the boat's normal water line level and into a large strainer. The water then flows down to the raw water impeller pump. From here, it's pumped up to an anti-siphon valve, again above the water line, and down into the heat exchanger exhaust elbow and out over the side. We need to fault find the entire circuit and we start by removing the lid of the water strainer. If there's no blockage in the pipe between the strainer and the seawater inlet, the water should drain out as soon as the lid is untightened. Obviously you can also check that the strainer itself isn't where the blockage is. So far, so good, no blockage. Next we need to move on to the water pump. We can take the cover off and remove the impeller. All seems to be well. So with the strainer lid still removed, let's start the engine to check the impeller is turning properly. And stop. I put everything back together again and still no cooling water. So if there's no blockage and the pump is still functioning, then we have to assume that there's a loss of suction somewhere. That can only really be in two places. The strainer has a crack in it or the lid isn't sealing properly, and I checked that and there's no signs of any problem with the strainer. So the other possibility is that the pump isn't sealing correctly, meaning it doesn't have enough suction to draw water up into the strainer when the system's empty. When your raw water pump starts to wear out, it's possible with some types of pump to reverse the cover and effectively provide an unworn face for the pump housing. Loosen cover to drain. They put that on the wrong way round. Yes, they have. They've put that on the wrong way round. I thought there was gasket material on the wrong side. The problem in our case is that the previous owner already did that, so the reverse side of the pump cover has worn out as well. Of course, once the system's primed full of water, the pump only has to keep a siphon going rather than draw water up through the strainer from dry. So if we manually prime the raw water system, we should be able to get the boat back to the nearest marina and effect a proper repair. With the seawater intake cock closed, we pour water into the strainer. So 
So hopefully we've got now, that is now primed the pump. So when the pump starts turning, it's going to suck into the filter. The filter's not blocked, we've already looked for that. And then when we open, so we start the engine, that starts to pump, forms a, forms a suction in there, sucks the water down, and then we then open the seacock, uh, and we should get water, and engine should start um, dramatically and with menaces. So that trick worked and got us safely into Weymouth, where we passed through the town bridge and into Weymouth Marina. There, we could take the water pump off to have a thorough inspection. The wear on both sides of the front cover was visible, but the back face of the pump housing was worn too, so there was little choice but to purchase a new pump. Oh, sweet relief, I have my spare parts. Removing the old pump is straightforward enough. Remove the hoses from the tails and then four 13mm bolts attach the pump base plate to the engine. The pump is driven by a drive gear, which is bolted onto a tapered shaft and needs swapping onto the new pump. Normally, this would be a workshop job as you really need a vice to get the bolt off, although with a lot of huffing and puffing, we did manage to do it on board. But pulling the gear off the taper was a different matter. All we had in the toolbox was an impeller puller and it just wasn't man enough for the job. We've been defeated by the lack of a gear puller, which is a tool that I wouldn't normally carry on about. I wouldn't normally expect to use it, but hey, these are trying times. So uh, I'm gonna take the old part with the, uh, with the cog still on it and uh, and the new part, uh, and I'm going to take him round to uh, Kingfisher Marine, who are on the quay, and I'm going to ask them if they can help. So I'm in the hands of the gods now. Um, hopefully they're going to be able to do it today and have plenty of time to get it fitted. We've got to sail out in the morning, otherwise bad things will be afoot. It seems that good things are afoot at the moment, uh, Kingfisher have managed to um, take the gear off the old pump and stuck it on the other one for me, which is brilliant. Uh, success! We have fitted a new water pump and water is coming out the back from a complete uh, empty system start. Unlike when we were in uh, Portland where we had to prime the system with water because it didn't have enough strength uh, to pull the water through, we didn't have to prime this so the entire system was completely empty and drained. Um, and so when I started it up, I had to wait a few seconds, but that was enough vacuum that the pump created, enough pump pressure to suck the water into the raw water filter and then from the raw water filter, start the siphoning process into the pump through the exhaust and out the back. So now uh, we've got uh, water coming out of the exhaust from a dry start uh, and that's uh, a big bonus. So final job is to get all the um, get all the oily mess out. I've put some spill soap down to collect the oil that came out when we changed the, uh, the pump uh, and I've got a new mat to go in. But I'm going to take the old mat out and uh, hopefully the spill soap that's, has absorbed what oil there is and then we can make sure the engine's nice and clean so that if there's any oil spills or water leaks we can spot them really easily uh, when we're out next. Um, yeah, anyway, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and oh, I hate folks. I just hate them. Damn their eyes. Damn them. Damn them. Damn them. Damn them. Damn their eyes. Damn their eyes.